So I'm ready to move on to the second stage of the amplifier and uh, right in the center here is the uh, second stage zoomed in um, and you can see at the core there's this 2SC 1971 uh, transistor. Um, now the biasing arrangement for this transistor it consists of these three uh, 56 ohm resistors right here. Uh, this VCC TX base is around about 9 volts so you can see at the base of the transistor here we're going to have roughly 3 volts. Uh, now this, uh, there's a 5.1 uh, ohm resistor on the emitter of the transistor to set up the DC biasing arrangement. And one of the things I noticed with LT Spice is uh, that creates a, a, a fairly sizable quiescent current of about half an amp through this transistor. So I think I'm, I'm going to have to put uh, a heat sink on it uh, even when I'm just uh, testing with that, uh, with that higher quiescent current. So this uh, resistor here, R21, is not connected, so there's no value there. I'm assuming this is in place in case you have oscillations in the amplifier. Uh, so that gives you a place to put uh, uh, sort of a dampening resistor in there. Then we have T2, which is uh, another one of those binocular cores. It's the middle-sized binocular core. And again, we have the cryptic 16 to 1, so I'm going to take the same assumption that it's four turns here to one turn here. Now off to the right hand side we have the sort of push-pull arrangement. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to stop after these uh, two, this pair of 20 ohm resistors right here. Um, like I said, it's not exactly the impedance that uh, this part of the circuit presents to here, but it, it's close enough I think to, for the purposes of testing. So let's walk over to the, uh, uh, the board and uh, kind of briefly walk through where these components are and then we'll uh, go ahead with a build and test. Okay, so just quickly where these components go on the board. Uh, this is the place for the 2SC1971. It goes on the underneath of the board, uh, the same place the IRF 530s go, and that gets affixed to the, uh, the heat sink underneath there. Uh, R13, R11 and R5 right here, this, these are the three 56 ohm resistors. The uh, T2, the uh, middle sized binocular core with uh, four turns on this side, one turn on this side goes right here. And then on the reverse of the board you have, uh, so this is where those two 20 ohm resistors go on the other side of uh, T2. And then this is this not connected uh, R21 here, so there'll be no component right here. So what I'll do, I'll put those uh, components on. Um, I will put a sort of a temporary heat sink uh, on the 2SC1971, um, uh, given the high quiescent current through it. Uh, but I'll do that, and then we'll come back and do some testing. Okay, so here's the uh, SMD components installed. There's those uh, 56 ohm resistors there, R13, R11, R5. Uh, the capacitors there, haven't installed the T2SC 1971. And just on the other side of the board, let's just quickly spin that over. Um, so here's those two 20 ohm resistors on the other side of T2. And note, again, they're marked 200, so 20 times 10 to the zero. Here's C18. And then the, the other thing, I forgot to mention these, but here's that big uh, 5.1 ohm resistor that's at the emitter of the 2SC1971 to take all that, uh, to take all that current. And then that, that, is, uh, that has these two capacitors, these two uh, 10 nanofarad capacitors in parallel with it. Uh, so that's the SMD components installed. What I'll do now is install the, um, uh, the transformer T2 and the 2SC1971. I'll come back and we'll be ready to test. So before I move on, I thought I'd do some test fitting of the, uh, here's the two RF530s here and here's the 2SC1971. Just to do some test fitting of those, just to make sure that the kind of leads are coming up in the right place. Uh, I haven't been 100% accurate in drilling these holes. So as you can see here, uh, these are kind of bent up at a funny angle. But um, what I might do is I'll tack these down uh, just to make sure that uh, kind of they're solid in the right place as 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 with the uh, 2SC 1971. Uh, one important thing to note is the, uh, th this metal part on all these transistors is connected to one of the leads. In, in the case of the MOSFETs, it's actually connected to the gate. In the case of the transistor, it's, connect, it's connected to the collector. So you have to make sure when you're sort of doing this 
kind of testing, it, it makes sure that the insulate, there's always insulation between the body of the transistor and the heat sink. Otherwise, you'll kind of short them all out together. But anyway, so what I'll do is I'll put the, uh, the PCB on top of this, kind of tack those in place, um, and then we'll then we'll be kind of good to go with some uh, with some testing. Okay, so there's the uh, three transistors tacked into place. So this is the 2SC1971. Here's the two MOSFETs, and uh, I've got I've just got the um, the uh, drain of the MOSFETs connected for the moment. It, it, I made a mistake uh, in the last section. It's the drain that's connected to the housing um, and the emitter that's connected to the housing here. But either way, you've got to make sure that when you put this on the heat sink that it's completely that this is completely insulated from the heat sink so anyway that's uh that's all those uh installed interestingly you know remember uh, the the sort of mention of the role of the diode in uh, sort of heat stabilization and you can see th this act this sorry bear with me for a moment while i organize myself so here's that diode right there. So you can see for this MOSFET, it's actually contacting the body of the MOSFET. So that's great for this MOSFET. But you can see this diode on the other side is well away from the body of the, of the MOSFET. So there's no way these two are thermally coupled together. Um, so, yep, thermally coupled on this side. You can see it, it will touch the, the, body of, the body of the diode, will touch the body of the MOSFET on this side, but it won't on this side. So... Not sure how effective that uh, thermal st stabilization will be, and this is absolutely the correct orientation of the MOSFETs. But anyway, uh, so what I'll do now is uh, I'm going to move on, um, get T2 wound and installed, and then we'll come back. Okay, so here's T2 installed, as you can see. So the uh, four turns come out this side, the one turn comes out this side, um, and then it's as usual. Well, we, we, winding a uh, binocular core is each time you go both times through the center that counts as one turn. So there's the kind of semi-finished uh, board there. Um, I, I'm definitely going to have to heat sink this in order to test it um, with half an amp going through it. That's going to get awful hot quite quickly. So let me, uh, I'm going to have to figure out, I'll, I'll probably put a, a separate heat sink on this rather than putting it down on the Kind of the heat sink board but anyway uh this is uh, kind of ready to test uh, what i'll be doing is uh probing on the output side of these uh of of t2 here uh, and we'll have a look at the waveform there okay so i've got all that uh put together um just started to test it uh, things are not going smoothly um i'm getting uh, nowhere near the amount of uh, output at the collector of uh the 2SC1971. Uh, so let's have a look at that to start with um, on the oscilloscope here. So let's uh, let's fire that up. Bear with me. So there's the signal at the collector of the uh, the 2SC1971, and I'm expecting sort of a roughly um, a 10 volt, uh, tw sorry, 20 volt peak to peak signal there. I'm getting only about 220 millivolts peak to peak. Um, so obviously uh, something's wrong in the circuit. Uh, I have actually been uh, I have actually been sort of troubleshooting this for some time just to see uh, if I can fix it. And let me just go through some of the things that I've been trying. So again, low gain on the second stage, uh, getting around about 200 to 300 millivolts peak to peak versus 10 to 15 volts uh, peak to peak, uh, which is what, ex what has been expected. Um, now, the voltage at the base of that, um, the, the DC bias at the base of the, that transistor is higher than I expected. So it's around about 4 volts uh, versus 3 volts. Um, and that transistor is getting super, super hot. So um, just a, a rough measurement, it, it, it is kind of uh, uh, pulling at least half an amp through it. Um, so base voltage is a little higher than expected. Uh, and it is getting hot, which kind of we did expect. Um, I did swap uh, for another 2SC1971, uh, no change at all. I rewound T2 with eight turns and two turns, um, and the problem actually got worse. I, I actually, the other thing I tried is I swapped in a BN4302 uh, 
instead of the one that came from the kit, no change at all. Um, the other thing that I tried is there's that uh, feedback combination at the collect from the collector to the base of the 2SC 1971. Remove that completely from circuit again, no change. What I think I might do is um, it's a little hard to sort of experiment with different values on the circuit. What I'm going to do is is uh, pull the uh, pull this off, get it on a sort of a separate PCB and uh, test some different values uh, out of this circuit entirely. So that's what I'll do next. Uh, I'll pull that together and we'll come back and uh, we'll do some testing and see if we can figure out what's going wrong. Okay, so I've just discovered something rather interesting. So on the data sheet for the 2SC two, uh, two 1971, the configuration is base, emitter, and collector, so VEC. Let's have a look on the uh, transistor tester and see what it reports. Okay, so I'm just, just going to kick this off. Note the configuration there. And you can see here it goes red is the base, green is the collector, and, and blue is the emitter. So in this transistor it goes base, collector, emitter. On the data sheet it was base, emitter collector so i i did get a comment on uh, on the 2sc 1971s and whether some kind of fakes or or whatever had been distributed as part of the kit so i'm not saying this is a fake but it's certainly different to the data sheet the mitsubishi data sheet that's on there so what i'll do is i'll i'll swap the leads around on the um on the actual board with the uh, with the transistor and I'll see if that improves situation. Okay so I've got the uh, 2SC1971 reinstalled with the pads twisted as you can see so from the left it goes on the transistor base collector emitter the pads at the bottom here go base emitter collector. Uh, I actually have I, do, I have got a heat sink on here I tried this without the heat sink and it just heats up too quickly um, so what we'll do is uh, let's have a look at the output of the collector. Um, so I'll be probing right here just above where you can see that C9. And then I'll probe on the other side of this uh, binocular core here which, is, uh, um, uh, which, which goes to the, the gate of, the, of those RF510. So let's move over to the oscilloscope and check it out. So probing at the collector of the 2SC1971, let's just check that out. And as you can see, that's a very healthy 14 volt peak to peak signal. Uh, let's now probe at the um, other side of that binocular core. Bear with me. Turn that on. Let's uh, adjust that a little bit. And there you can see a, around about a 1.84 volt peak to peak signal. So that's the other side of that binocular core. So. That's kind of in the ballpark of uh, what uh, LT Spice was predicting for for uh, this uh, level of input. Um, so that's uh, that's great. Um, I, I was uh, uh, I was really scratching my head on this one. I, I simply couldn't figure it out. And uh, I guess uh, some of these kits come with uh, uh, unusual versions of the 2SC1971. So. Uh, what I might do uh, now is, uh, seeing as the second stage is working and I've spent quite a bit on this, a um, uh, bit of time in this, I'm gonna wrap this video for the moment and then we'll move in the next video onto the final stage. Uh, that's the, uh, the, the pair of uh, push-pull MOSFETs and uh, we'll take it from there. So I hope you enjoyed this video and troubleshooting. Catch you all later.